Remember, a z-score is simply the number of standard deviations above or below the mean we are. So, a z-score of positive 1 is really the same thing as saying a place in this distribution where we are one standard deviation above the mean. Or in other words, where we are 4.04 .04 points above 15.90. Now we can calculate this, this is pretty straightforward, 15.90 plus 4.04, .04, which will give us a value of around 19.94. Now this isn't terribly specific, we're gonna look at a better way of doing this, but let me enter this into the data filter, 19.94. When I enter that in, Notice Jump immediately returns the number of rows or number of observations that match this criterion, 1601. That is, there's about 16% or a proportion of 0.16 of this distribution above one z-score. That is, beyond positive one z-score going up towards positive infinity. Now we don't have any scores at positive infinity, but notice that's essentially what this is saying. You might recall we saw a way to save the standardized scores from the distribution platform. So another way of answering this question, let me clear the selection, is to go to the red triangle next to the depression score, go to save, and here I'll save the standardized values. Let me click clear and start over, and instead of using the depression score as my filtering variable, I'll instead select the standardized depression score. Let me click add, and this time, I only have to enter in the value of 1. That is, we want to know the place where there is greater than 1 standardized score for an individual. This time, it returns a more precise value. 1,594 rows match this criterion. That is, having a z-score of 1 or more. And let's not forget what this means. The proportion of this distribution that has a z-score of 1 or more is 0.1594, that also means that the probability I would randomly select a row from this distribution that has a value on that standardized value of one or more is also 0.1594. So proportions and probabilities are really the same thing. Now let's try one final example using IQ scores for again, 10,000 individuals. And I wanna ask the exact same question. What's the probability of randomly selecting a person from this population who scored one or more standard deviations above the mean. That is to say, had a z-score of one or more. Let's go back to jump, and if you have the journal, you can click IQ under the examples to bring up this table. Now again, let's first start by going to the distribution platform and looking at the distribution of IQ scores. You may notice something very interesting. This distribution has the identical shape as our BDI distribution. And in fact, let me bring back the BDI table, and I'll even bring up the distribution for depression scores. Let's put these side by side, and you'll notice that they have a very similar shape, a shape we'll come to know as the normal distribution. Now hang on to that for a second, the fact that the shapes of these distributions are the same. Let's try to answer the question we have at hand. What's the probability we would randomly select an observation from this distribution that has a z-score of one or greater? Well, we know it's gonna be some place in this tail, and if we look at the summary statistics, we can already guess where it's going to be. The mean of this distribution is 100, the standard deviation is almost exactly 15, so it's gonna be all the way from positive infinity, really just above 155, all the way down to about 115. But let's be specific again. I'm gonna to go to the red triangle next to IQ, go to save, and I'm gonna save the standardized values. And like we did last time, I'll go to the rows menu and select the data filter. This time, I'll go directly to the standardized IQ value, and I'm gonna enter in, for the lower bound, a value of one. Now let's look at the number of matching rows, 1,560. Now again, proportion is the same as probability for us here. So the probability of me randomly selecting an individual from this distribution with an IQ of one standard deviation above the mean or greater, that is a z-score of positive one or greater, is 0 0.1560. Now, I don't know if you remember, but let's go back to the depression score, and actually let's look at the proportion of this distribution again that had a z-score of one or more as well. Let's actually go back and I'll save the standardized values. I'll go to the rows menu and do a data filter on this distribution. And again, let's enter in a value here of positive one. 
For this distribution, it was 1,594 rows. For the IQ, it was 1,560. This is remarkably similar. Notice something about these two distributions. They have the same shape, and remember z-scores do us something very special. They equate locations in distributions that have very different characteristics. These two distributions have very different means and very different standard deviations, but as soon as we ask the question in terms of a z-score, these two distributions start looking very similar. That is, the probability we would randomly select somebody with a depression score at a value of z-score of 1 or greater is really the same thing as the probability of randomly selecting somebody with an IQ of a z-score of 1 or greater. Because these distributions have the same shape, once we equate them in terms of z-scores, the proportions of the distributions will be the same. And very importantly for us, because these two distributions have a normal shape, that is, a specific shape in statistics, a normal distribution, we're going to be able to know a lot about these distributions without ever collecting any data. That is, me telling you that these distributions were normally distributed, you could have answered this question without ever looking anything up in this table. The reason why is because we know a lot about the proportionality of the normal distribution, which is where we turn our attention now.